Welcome! Integrating plants into a pest management plan to attract beneficial insects and manage pests is a growing practice amongst growers. To help understand these concepts, we created this basic webinet, a condensed form of a standard webinar. This includes Pictinars, a picture-based learning strategy modeled after flashcards on the use of some common systems. By the end of this webinet, we hope you will have the resources necessary to incorporate some of these strategies into your production systems. Plant-mediated systems are plants used in combination with other integrated pest management strategies. Some systems function as a scouting aid to detect attracted pests. Others provide a site for the release of purchased natural enemies to disperse from, or provide attractive habitat for wild ones. Before the use of these systems, it's important to establish proper cultural practices to start clean to stay clean and develop a monitoring routine to detect any issues that may arise. Some plants are more attractive to pests than others. These are used as indicator or trap plants to detect pests quickly and early in the growing season. When trapped pest populations increase, they can be treated with a spot insecticide treatment or through releases of beneficial insects. Alternatively, it can be bagged and removed from the greenhouse to eliminate the pests. Some examples of indicator and trap plants are yellow marigolds for thrips and bush beans for spider mites. Banker plants provide an ongoing supply of natural enemies that disperse into production systems. Some provide alternative food sources, such as pollens and nectars. Others provide specific hosts that promote the continuous reproduction of natural enemies. An example of a pollen-producing banker plant is ornamental peppers used for the early season establishment of the predatory bug aureus against thrips. In contrast, the aphid banker plant system uses cereal grasses to support an aphid that won't attack most commonly produced crops. A parasitic wasp, Aphidius colmani, uses this aphid for reproduction. The wasps then disperse from the system into the crop in search of green peach or melon aphid. Habitat plants are plantings of pollen producing flowers that are highly attractive to beneficial insects. These plants provide food in the forms of pollen, nectar, or attracted pests. They also provide shelter, resting places, and sites to lay eggs and reproduce. Searfid flies, whose larvae feed on aphids and other soft-bodied insects, are just one of many beneficial insects attracted to these plantings. Some examples of habitat plants are alyssum, dill, sunflower, zinnias, cosmos, coreopsis, and several other annuals. Monitoring is an essential component of successful pest management. It is critical to visually inspect crop plants to determine the type and number of pests and natural enemies they are hosting. The identification of some pests, such as aphids, is important if biological control is used. Many natural enemies, such as parasitic wasps, only attack particular species. Care must be taken when using plant-mediated systems to ensure they don't become a source for a pest outbreak. With diligent monitoring, success is achievable. If unsure of what insect is present, collect a bag of specimens or take clear pictures and contact your local university extension agent for assistance. Now that you have a basic knowledge of some common systems, we can briefly discuss some guidelines so you can successfully integrate them into production. 
The following pages can act as flashcards and can be printed and folded on the dotted line and laminated and used for the future. Marigold Trap Plants Yellow marigolds are very attractive to thrips and sometimes spider mites. These are the most attractive and effective early in the season when the majority of the crop is not flowering. The variety Hero Yellow is a good option. It has prolific blossoms throughout most of the season. Flowers within six weeks are cheap and easy to produce. If low levels of thrips are detected, the predatory mites cucumerus could be added. These mites feed on pollen in addition to the thrips. If populations are above your action thresholds, removal and replacement with new ones may be effective. Sticky cards placed within add an additional trapping and monitoring technique. Bean trap plants. Bush beans are very attractive to spider mites. Plants can be grown in pots or direct seeded into the ground. Effective locations for trapping are along the edges of greenhouses and tunnels or other structures to attract overwintering spider mites as they first appear. Beans can also be planted along with the crops in the understory. When beans become infested, remove and replant them. Young plants tend to be more attractive than older, so it's important to routinely replace them. Aphid banker plants. Wheat, oats, or barley are common host plants used in this system. It is important to establish this system early in the season, about four to six weeks before crops are planted. This allows the host bird cherry oat aphids to establish on the grass. The pots with the aphids should be grown in cages away from the crops they will protect. This is especially important as the season progresses as the parasitic wasps are very efficient at finding their hosts and care needs to be taken to avoid contamination of the host aphid colony. When crops are planted, the pots with aphids can be placed into the growing areas then inoculated with Aphidius colmani, a parasitic wasp that attacks green peach or melon aphids. East week, new systems should be planted and existing ones in the crop replenished. These systems are not suitable in production if more than 10% of the crops are monocots, such as ornamental grasses. This system works the best early in the season before hyperparasites, parasites of the parasite, become abundant. Habitat plants. Habitat plants should provide a diversity of resources to attract beneficial insects. Plants should be chosen with a mix of blossom sizes, colors, and blooming periods. Flowers can either be transplanted or directly seeded into the ground or pots, or a mixture of both, to ensure a prolonged flowering period. Plants should be inspected on a regular basis for pests and natural enemies. If found to be weak, dying, or infested with unwanted pests, they should be removed and replaced. By now, you should be familiar with several types of plant-mediated systems and how to incorporate them into your operation. Please remember, these systems should be integrated as part of a complete pest management plan. Always start clean to stay clean and monitor both crop and system plants on a regular basis for pest and natural enemies to be sure they do not become a source of a pest outbreak. There is no cookbook approach to using these systems. Start simple and find a method and system that works for your own unique operation. When in doubt, contact a specialist in your area for help. Thank you for watching.